It's Olympic Stadium at half time. It is AS Roma nil, Real Madrid nil. Alongside uh, Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. At this point, we'd also like to welcome viewers joining us for coverage of the UEFA Champions League on ESPN2 in the United States. Uh, Roma make their way out. It's one that yellow card in the first uh, 45 minutes that went to Real Madrid's defender Karanka a minute before half time. But Tommy Smith, the main talking point during the uh, half time break was the two no penalty calls. Oh, yeah, the, to me, it looked like Matthew Studer was taken down inside of the box, and uh, on the opposite end, Raul was taken down inside of the box. But putting that aside, Real Madrid had a number of clear cut opportunities, Mike, that should have ended up as goals, but they didn't. And uh, they're going to. Uh, Roma's making a, a change, if you can believe. At this stage, Lima's coming on. Well, we noticed in the game, I mean, Cafu took a knock and Antonio Carlos took a knock. This is another Brazilian who is coming on, Francisco Lima. Right. He's signing this season from uh, Bologna for five and a half million dollars. So he is on, uh, trying to get confirmation of uh, who he's come on to replace. And in fact, it seems that it might well be Montella who has uh, gone out, Tommy. That's a bit of a surprise, although he did have uh, an ankle injury which kept him out of action at the weekend. Very, very unusual to take Montella out in a situation like this, unless, as you said, he was injured. And Lima came from the same club, Unio or San Joao, as, as a Roberto Carlos. So we have two sugar men out there on the field right now but he took a very unusual route to get to Italy Mike he went first through a team in Turkey and from there he went to Switzerland then he signed with Lecce and now he signed with Roma no changes for uh, Real Madrid there's Figo Fernando Hierro Field here, Steve McManaman. Well, Shaggy was very ineffective in the first half, Mike. McManam had a couple of opportunities and he just simply gave the ball away. Uh, Luis Figo whipping this one across. No worries there for uh, Zoli, the goalkeeper. Takes a bit of a deflection. You can see us there. That is uh, well just to keep it in play. Well, Tati now is going to become the out-and-out -out striker alongside of Patti Stuta with no Montella out there. And this one, he just wings across the face of goal. And certainly Real Madrid had the better of the chances in the first half. Raul and Guti. Culprits with uh, some rather bad miss misses. And here's Makaleli. Figo goes down under the challenge from Antonio Carlos. And that is Lima, the player who's come on as a substitute. Cafu. Run down the far side now with the cross. Batistuta lays it off. Candela. No worries in the end for uh, Casillas. Well, practically the whole of the first half we saw Candela as a defender. This time now he pushes up on that side and uh, it comes up with a good shot. Cafu had been pushing up on the right hand side, Mike, most of the first half, but uh, Candela had stayed at home. Now it looks like he's going to push up a little bit more. Capello had so much success in his time at uh, AC Milan in this trophy in 1994. Took Real Madrid to a league uh, championship. When you listen to Roberto Carlos talk, he says that Capello had uh, the most influence on his career. I mean, Roberto Carlos had a terrible time in Italy when he was with Inter, just couldn't get on the team at all. And he ends up coming to Real Madrid and has a huge success here. 
This is a highly respected coach, uh, Fabio Capello. Five years old now, former international in his playing days. Well, he'd always be remembered for that goal that beat England at Wembley, the first time Italy ever beat Wembley. Trying to put a year on that. I think it was 64, was it? You see this Raul slipping inside, and Antonio Carlos, who had a, a tremendous game, he really had a great game in the first half. He's done a lot of good hard work here. Makes a slight mistake as he takes Raul down. It's actually not the 63, it was the 74, 73. I'm giving him about 10 more years than he should get. Now, free kick for Real Madrid. That means uh, Roberto Carlos. Luis Figo's no slouch at uh, free kicks either. And in fact, it is Figo! He scored! Great strike from Luis Figo, and Real Madrid have taken the lead. Beautiful strike from Figo, except when Roberto Carlos walked up, and I'm sure as it, there's not a sound to be heard in the stadium. I'm sure a lot of people felt that Roberto Carlos is man. Look at the curve on that as he puts the bulge in the corner of the Olonga bike. Absolutely brilliant from Figo. Watch it. Did it take a hit off a hand or something going inside? It looked like the rotation of the ball changed, but maybe it was just that he he hit it so well. To me, it looked like it was changing on its way in. Well, Luis Figo with the free kick has broken the deadlock. Goal coming five minutes into the second half. AS Roma nil, Real Madrid one. And Luis Figo missed the game at weekend because of suspension. He is able now to give Real Madrid the lead here. Back come Roma. Candela. Lima who came on as a substitute it was away there by Hierro Antonio Carlos now trying to get behind Roma there's only 200 uh, fans here tonight from uh, Madrid Madrid actually returned some of their ticket allocation he goes Raul I was amazed at that for Real Madrid returned 6,000 tickets, Mike. You'd imagine as a team that has such great support that they would have had a bigger travelling contingent. As you see Raul doing a little bit of pushing here with the man who just came on and uh, the referee penalises Raul. Luis Figo's goal, five minutes into the second half, is the goal that separates these two sides. It's Roma nil. Real Madrid won the goal from the free kick expertly struck I think there's a hand goes up on the wall or something Mike and changes that there changes the rotation of the ball I'm not saying the keeper was going to get to it and it was certainly a very well struck ball it did a lot of unusual things in the way and it was like a butterfly almost like a knuckle ball going into the back of the net Karenka Steve McManaman Conseil who missed so much of last season because of injury after his transfer from Deportivo La Coruña. Guti. Well, that's a glorious ball. Behind the defence, McManaman now needs some help, lays it back. In the end, uh, came at a rather awkward angle for Raul. Let's have a look at this free kick again. Was there a handball there, Tommy? Yeah, it looked like it, even if, if it was, it didn't make any difference. Palazzoli was never going to catch up to it. And, you know, something we talked about at length at the beginning of the game, Mike, all the great strikers and everything out there. You've got to give these two goalkeepers a lot of credit. I mean, the two of them are 18 years of age. Palazzoli last year started out as the third goalkeeper with Atlanta, and when Fontana and Pintado got injured, he ends up being the first goalkeeper. Now he comes over here and he knocks Antonioli out of the box, the man who uh, led them to a Scudetto last year. In fact, there's rumours that Antonioli may be on his way to a club in England. Antonioli can see us at the other end. 20 now, regular for uh, Spain. Also got his opportunity because of adversity and injuries. Took it with both hands. 
Frenchman and 20 year old goalkeepers, one at each end. Ilner and Bizarri were two keepers that got injured too, so it's, it's basically the same thing. And look at this the man who came on as a substitute, Mike, has got wrapped around the face and he's down injured. Let's go, Lima. We're going to see what actually the ball hit him right in the face as he came forward and uh, that one stung. Started his career at Ferroviaria. Well, the man that's the talk of Italian football is out there at the moment as we check this out, getting warmed up. Cassiano, the youngster, who cost him $23 million. And by his own admission, he thought he was worth $35 million. He's only 19. Yeah, he's got a pretty cocky attitude, hasn't he? Uh, foul there by Batistuta, hence the free kick, which Real Madrid have taken quickly. Fernando Hierro now. Salgado. And he goes down, the uh, challenge from behind. And there he is, the young man. We just got to look at him. I mean, the seven big teams in Italy all wanted to sign him, Mike. It was a very hot property, isn't it? Italian under 21 international. The kick this time goes against Guti. It was all over Antonio Carlos. He basically just stepped on his heel. Well, Real Madrid have a good opening day record in this uh, Champions League. The only time that they. Uh, were beaten on the opening day was in the 1995-96 season when they lost to Ajax. They lead here at the Olympic Stadium in Rome with a Luis Figo goal five minutes after the restart. Roma nil, Real Madrid won. Since that loss to uh, Ajax, they've beaten Rosenborg 4-1, International of uh, Milan 2-0. Olympiacos a 3-3 draw and Sporting Club of Lisbon last season a 2-2 draw so they've got a good opening day record in this competition. The only thing you need to count on that is we see him really getting stuck in here Lima getting pushed around a little bit. They've had 17 trips to Italy Mike they've only won once. That's amazing when you, you look at all the times they've played in Italy. Yes, that was in the 1961-62 season in the European Cup as it was then they won 1-0 against Juventus. Last of 14 visits, four draws and 10 losses. They did draw on their last visit here, though, and that was to this stadium last year where they played a 2-2 draw with Lazio. And before that, they had gone 13 years after a 1-1 draw with Napoli. They couldn't get a win. So sometimes uh, figures do tell lies, don't they? Candler with the throw. There's uh, Totti who goes down. Piera. Not standing on any ceremony, just dumping Totti. And you can see Totti almost reluctantly shakes hands with Hierra after he just knocks him out of it. It's the two captains there. As he challenged that on uh, Makaleli. Free kick for Real Madrid. Oh, Fabio Capello. He's made one change. Is he thinking now of any more? Can use a maximum of three substitutes. Antonio Carlos. Well, there, was, there was a feeling that it might have been Solari or Savio that would have started on that left side of midfield today, Mike. But McManaman got the call. McManaman, for my money, hasn't been at all effective out there. And I'm just wondering, we might see a change at some point. Would he bring in Savio to replace McManaman? Well, there was uh, wide reports in the Spanish press at the weekend that Steve McManaman is going to be uh, on the transfer list. It hasn't been confirmed. Here he is on the ball now. Lays it square. Guti lays it back. Figo! Great save from the keeper. It should have been and nearly was 2-0. Well worked move. Great strike from Figo.
Figo gets the ball back, played nicely back to him by Guti, and Figo is a little bit off balance when he pounces on the ball. He never really gets the full weight of his body behind it, but you've got to give Pelizzoli a lot of credit, Mike. That was a good reaction save. He picked up the ball very late. And Manaman again trying the shot. Oh, trying to curl it into the far corner, but it was off target. Well, I just talked about how McManaman wasn't playing well, and then he comes along and he gets involved in the two situations, the last two attacks that Real Madrid have had. And Cassano is definitely coming on, Mike. That's Antonio Cassano. So you'd imagine that he's going to go back to a three-strike force, bringing Cassano in, so... Bannstruzer, who has really well been uh, well bottled up by the Real Madrid defence. I haven't seen much of Emerson all day, Mike, whether he get the hoop. I mean, it's, it's difficult to take it on, but just trying to be the devil's advocate here. Played by Karenka. Now Luis Figo. Still Figo's. But Manaman tries the shot. Trying to chip the keeper. Didn't quite get enough height on it. A great move from Real Madrid. And it started inside their own half, Tommy. What great running by Luis Figo. He has drifted more into the middle here in the second half. Has become much more effective in it. As he goes around Antonio Carlos, who went down. And then he lays it off perfectly onto McManaman. And McManaman tries to beat the keeper, but didn't hit it hard or high enough over an hour played Luis Figo's goal in the 50th minute since Real Madrid leading here at uh, Rome's Olympic Stadium Roma nil Real Madrid won as we are going to get a change and Cassani is the player who is going to come on now and Marcos uh, Sao is the player who comes off well I went for one midfielder but it was the other one he took out and uh, Cassano getting his first ever start in a Champions League game. Young man who came from Bari. As we said, all seven big teams in Italy wanted him. Everybody wanted him if you listen to the reports, Mike. And he went for the bargain price in the end of 63, uh, what was it, $23 million? $23 million. He figured himself, I heard him say that he thought he was worth $35 million. Scored six goals in 48 outings for Bari. a new experience the Champions League for most of these players in the Roma side Emerson played in the 97-98 season while at Bayer Leverkusen Batistuta in the 1999-2000 season while at Fiorentina and they're the only two players playing for Roma tonight who have got uh, European experience in this uh, Champions League of course a lot of these players involved in the UEFA Cup last season and if you joined us late, especially those folks on ESPN2, Anderlecht and Lokomotiv Moscow played to a 1-1 draw earlier. They are the two uh, other teams in this group. Steve McManaman. Guti. And Luis Figo. More familiar right wing position and Guti makes it 2-0. He missed an identical chance at the weekend for Real Madrid, but he didn't miss this one. Well picked out by Luis Figo, and Guzzi makes it 2-0. Well, we talked about how in the first 10-15 minutes, the Roma defence were really ragged looking. They've gone back to that now, and Guti gets in behind Anthony Carlos. Watch this, he puts the head onto it, and the youngster in goal has no chance. A beautiful ball by Figo really well knocked through by Guti and that's a beautiful goal and realistically Real Madrid could be up 5-0 at this stage Mike with the ones they missed in the first half but they're not missing them here in the second half it's a different story well, Guti did miss one in the first half but he's played up for it there well he missed a chance like that at the weekend against Malaga but this time time is jumped to perfection all the accuracy in the world. Figo in the 50th minute, Guti in the 63rd minute. It is Roma nil, Real Madrid two. Oh, 
Capello has done a, a bit of movement here, Mike. Cassano comes in now. He's going to play. He's playing in the role that Montella had, which was as the striker, which means that Totti comes back into the hole behind the two strikers. Batty Stute and Cassano are the strikers, and uh, Lima will replace Asin Sao in midfield. So they've gone back to that four in midfield, and they've gone back to the three attackers, but now they're 2 nothing down. I don't know, I just don't like those three men in the back. It always looks like there's holes to be had when there's three men in the back. And you see Guti finds a lot of holes there as he just slips inside and uh, puts it away rather nicely. Guti, who recently became a very proud father. I think we got a, just a, a good look, a good glimpse at the, the baby. Gabriel Batistuta has battled the way up front for Roma, but one has to say, in all honesty, that uh, he hasn't got any service in this match whatsoever. Now, Guti is the player down. That's why the ball's been knocked out of play, so that the Real Madrid player can get some attention. I think it was Samuel who got a, a good piece of Guti. Samuel, who was uh, on international duty last week, that Argentine side that beat Brazil 2-1 in the World Cup qualifier. Oh, he kicked them, Mike. Kicked them at the back of the leg. This is spotted, though, by the uh, officials. And you're going to see the, the goal, and here's why Guti might have got a little extra knock there because of the way he finished that one off. Samuel missed him. He was on the wrong play. Had he been as close to him this time as he was when he just kicked them, it would be a different story. But Samuel had drifted back to pick up Raul and Anthony Carlos let Guti get in behind him. Guti wanted to come back on. He's waiting for the signal from uh, referee Graham Pohl. <laughs> Guti is back on. So Real Madrid, the full complement of players. Roma, their first appearance in the Champions League. First appearance, in fact, in Europe's top club competition in 18 years. And it's all going wrong for them at the moment. And the trial here by two goals to nil. And now McManaman. Figo. And Raul back for Roberto Carlos. Raul on the far side, gets bundled down. It's going to be a free kick for Real Madrid. Let's bring you up to date uh, with the matches being played around Europe tonight on uh, this, the opening night of matches in the Champions League. Lokomotiv Moscow and Anderlecht played a 1-1 draw in Moscow in the second half at Anfield. It is 1-1 between Liverpool and Boa Vista. Dinamo Kiev are leading Borussia Dortmund 2-1 in Kiev. That game from Group B as well as the Liverpool game in Group C. No goals in Germany between uh, Schalke and Panathinaikos. Mallorca still leading by the penalty from Ngonga after 12 minutes over Arsenal in Mallorca. Not now 3-0 ahead of PSV uh, Hindhoven. And Stefan Dalmar getting the third of their goals. Now Real Madrid look for goal number three here. Ball laid back. Figo, Makaleli. Now the shot from Salgado, they were queuing up there. Well, it was a case of trying to walk the ball into the net. There were so many chances. Makaleli has it and he lays it back to Salgado who has come forward to help out on the attack. And Salgado's ball just keeps curving away from the goalkeeper all the time and away off the target. Just slipped round the, the post. Look at that, Real Madrid out shooting Roma 3-1. to one. And now the visitors. Yeah, for the first 10, 15 minutes, Real Madrid didn't manage to get out of their own half of the field. Oh, oh. Emerson, uh, Emerson and uh, Guti got involved there. Emerson, uh, he gets pushed around a little bit here, but watch the end of this play. He catches Guti there. Now, when the two players get up, 
Watch what Emerson does here. I think he deserves a card of this. Guti pushes him, and Emerson just gives him the backhander into the face. Be interesting to see what the referee's going to do. I know the two of them are involved. There's neither Saint, so it's a good decision. Give the two of them cards, maybe. Guti and Emerson go into the referee's notebook. Both are getting yellow cards. And here go Real Madrid. So Carlos knocks it across the face of goal. Nobody can get on to the end of it. Cafu. Salgado. Well read there by uh, Fernando Hierro. Oh, and uh, Luis Figo gets caught from behind by uh, Lima. Oh, Lima hasn't looked very cultured since coming on here, Mike. He's gotten himself involved in a number of situations which the referee could have taken a, another look at. It's a takedown from behind. Surely that's got to be a card. It was supposed to be a red card. They were trying to outlaw it. He's got away with it completely. And now Salgado. demoralized they don't seem to have too much idea exactly what they can do to get back into this game they've still got 20 minutes left and they've got a pretty good scorer on the bench down there Balbo fourth leading goal scorer in Syria when you look at Batistuta Signori and Baggio or Baggio and Signori before him well, they've got the best one out there in Batistuta but uh, in all honesty he's not all like scoring tonight but you've got to give him uh, some opportunities and they haven't done that Figo and Gucci, though, have taken their opportunities for Real Madrid. Who lead here by two goals to nil. Real Madrid, who haven't won this season yet. In uh, Spain's La Liga. As Batistuda got a side of goal for about the first time tonight. Put it into the side netting. Well, he's claiming that it was deflected, but I don't think so. As he walks inside, uh, Batistuda doesn't get the best of shot off. Carranca does well enough. And Batistuda said that the keeper put a hand on to it. Batistuta lets the ball beat him nicely. Atari might have taken Karanka onto the inside. Instead, he pushes it out outside and left put it. I don't think it should be a corner kick. I think it was the right call. Uh, Batistuta. Push through. Goal here for Roma would set it up for a grandstand finish. Now the player goes down, and this time the referee points to the spot. Zebi now going through. He came up the field, and uh, Karanka making the tackle on him. Watch this a nice ball from Totti. Karanka is the man who takes down Zebi now, and uh, no question about that one, Mike. This is a penalty kick all the way. He makes absolutely no contact with the ball, and he just rips him out of it. Totti with a nice ball, but it was a good run through by Zebina, who is playing as the right full. So Totti, the captain, takes the responsibility for the penalty. This to bring Roma back into it. Oh, and he scores most emphatically. And now the Olympic Stadium erupts. Well, that's exactly what Roma and Capello and the fans needed here to wake them up. Totti just stepped up to it. He had his mind made exactly what he wanted to do, and he just rifled it into the corner. It's a rocket of a shot. He just banged it home. Roma one, Real Madrid two. And all of a sudden, the decibel level here at the Olympic Stadium has gone up as Roma now sends that they might just be able to get something out of this game. Candela to take the throw. Away there by Fernando Hierro. McManaman. Carranca, a long one forward. Nobody that far forward, though, for Real Madrid.
Antonio Carlos. Lima. Candela. All nice for all that time from Roma. Candela again with a cross towards the far post. Roberto Carlos got there for Real Madrid. Well, Roberto Carlos just blocking out Cafu. Cafu is coming, drifting in on that back post. Candela tried to put the ball on his head. Cafu then with the corner. Now the shot! Oh, and it's over the top. What a glorious opportunity that was. Well, Zebina, the man who has started to come forward, might found himself inside as this ball was knocked through. He might have been better off had he let it go. Watch this, he turns on it. The ball's already on its way towards the goal, and uh, Cassano had knocked that ball through. And I mean, if there hadn't been a second touch on it there, it might have been in the back of the net. Well, all of a sudden, that goal has had the right effect on uh, Roma. I think it was who put that uh, chance over the top. And now Real Madrid. They've won the Spanish Super Cup this season, overcoming uh, Real Zaragoza. Still give their first win in Spain's La Liga. They are leading here, though, by two goals to one. Figo and Guti, the scorers. Totti Brick pulling one back for Roma from the penalty spot. Roma 1, Real Madrid 2, with Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill, we're at the Olympic Stadium in Rome. Fabio Capello, who coached Real Madrid to the La Liga title. In one season in charge, has won this competition while in charge at AC Milan. They won it in 1994, beating Barcelona 4-0. AC Milan side, who were written off beforehand because they had so many injury problems and suspensions. Well, if he, if he could win it now with Roma, Mike, there's only two men. Happel is one of with Feyenoord and Hamburg, and Hitzfeld one of with Borussia Dortmund and uh, Bayern Munich. So, Capello would like to be the, the man to win it with two clubs. But amazingly, when he went back from Real Madrid that time, remember AC Milan had a horrible year, the finish way down 10th or 11th in Serie A, and that's how he ended up getting fired, and he ended up with the Roma job. Sometimes you lose, you make out like a bandit. Great atmosphere here now around uh, Rome's Olympic Stadium. Here's Luis Figo. He's allowed to go all the way through to the keeper. Play from the youngster. Zabina. Trying to get that one in. Real Madrid now. A chance on the counter attack. Led there by Roberto Carlos. Now Luis Figo. He's got Raul ahead of him. Still Luis Figo. Whips this one in. And wide. Good defending there by Antonio Carlos. Just to force the Portuguese international to go wide. Well, he's much more effective coming down the middle. A couple of little uh, step-over moves, and uh, he fires off the shot, Mike. We've seen him operate out on the right wing today. He hasn't been all that effective. But he remember was Van Hall. He used to be trying to get him to go down the middle, too, a little bit more than uh, staying on the wing. And uh, Figo's had a pretty good game out there for himself, but to me, he's been much more effective going down the middle than he has when he's out wide on that right wing. And here's Raul. He's got McManaman outside in. There is Steve McManaman. Face there by Zabina. Also Carlos. And Flavio Conceição. Ball just hooks away from him. Chance now for Roma. Just under 12 minutes to play. Tackle from behind. And some shirt to pull in as well by Fernando Hierro on Gabriel Batistuta. Oh, there he is, the man I was talking about, Balbo. He, Capello is going to give him a shot at it by the looks of things. At least they're going to have plenty of firepower on there. Oh, Balbo, who 
27 appearances for Argentina, 11 goals. Here's another Argentine international. And denied there by Casillas. What a well-struck free kick from Gabriel Batistuta. Well, we saw Figo with a really great free kick that scored. Batistuta bangs this one in. And Casillas with a one-handed save. And Madrid survived the corner. It was away there by Fernando Hierro. Now Figo. Figo showing a good turn of speed, but uh, he was well tied up by the defender. The player who was up there supporting Figo was actually Roberto Carlos. Figo goes down this time. Francisco Lima is the player that's down. Here's that free kick from Gabriel Badistur. He struck it well, and uh, Casillas did well. You've got to give full marks to the young goalkeeper. He certainly did, and Lima goes down on his own here, Mike. He twisted. You could see the weight of his body going on that ankle of his. No contact at all, and he just uh, simply fell very awkwardly. Casillas coming up with a beautiful save. As you see, watch what happens here. There it is. The weight of the body just turned over on the ankle. They have to take him off. I just wonder if they'll still bring on uh, Balbo on, and because uh, it will mean then a completely reorganisation of the uh, tactical system, Tommy. Yeah, well, I, I'd say they're they're definitely going to bring on Balbo. It looks like. Yeah, Balbo's coming on. Fabio yeah. Capello is just going to wait. I think for I guess the thumbs up from. Uh, uh, medical staff, so it does mean that uh, Lima is going to be able to stay on. Now, Luis Figo to take this free kick. There is Lima, he's back on. Luis Figo. Guti loses his footing. Roma, chance to get it forward quickly. Emerson very ineffective in midfield today Emerson for Roma Panama is now over onto the right hand side that's where he took the ball away from Emerson I talked about earlier I thought that Capello might have taken Emerson off but it's Cafu that's coming off he got a knock in the first half Mike and Cafu is coming off here the Brazilian international replaced by a former Argentine international for the remaining eight minutes or so. The man who's coming in has scored 117 goals and 252 appearances in Serie A, so Capello's figuring that maybe he can get a goal out of him. Well, they've got so much striking power on there now with uh, Balbo and Batistuta. Somehow they've got to conjure up some chances for them, which they found it very difficult to do. Here's Totti. And ball uh, is given against Roberto Carlos. And of course, this is Balbo's second stint back with uh, Roma. Remember, he had that. This is his second uh, spell as he plays this. It's run across. It's knotted down. Hooked away there by Roberto Carlos. Now, Totti. Through a crowd of players, great reaction saved there from Casillas. That took a deflection, and the goalkeeper there reacted like lightning. I'm not sure. I thought it hit him on the shoulder. All that, all that I know is he kept the ball out of the net. That's all that counts in this situation. But Roma were certainly very unlucky not to have the ball in the back of the net there. And Flavio Conceição. Shot was on target, but safely into the arms of the keeper. They've actually put Balbo into the spot vacated by Cafu. Watch the ball coming across here and watch the keeper as he comes out to it. The ball is nicked out of there. We didn't see the end of the save, but he kept it out, and that's all that counts. All played over the top. It just bounces out of play. Leo Capello looks on.
Casano has fitted in very well since coming on, Mike. Not sure $23 million were fit in, but he's fitted in. Well, he certainly does look a great prospect for the future. He's an Italian under 21 international. Remember, he's still only uh, 19. Amoroso, a score for Borussia Dortmund, who tied all up in Kiev. 2 2 there. Dino Kiev and Borussia Dortmund. And uh, Nantes now 4 0 ahead of PSV Eindhoven. The French champions who have made a disastrous start domestically, finding their form in the Champions League. Now here's Balbo. Oh, and he's hit the crossbar. A let off there for Real Madrid. Oh, and as you said, they're lining up to hit that one, and Balbo was the last man on it. Batty Stuta inside with a lovely little dummy, and we talked about all the goals this man has scored. He couldn't get one here. Totti's involved in the play. The ball comes out to him. Look at that. He hits it off the upright he had the keeper completely beaten Casillas had come across onto the left hand side and Balbo knocks it off the top Mike now Roma piling on the pressure they'd like to pick up it's a share of the points here Totti Adam Studer trying to nod it down Manaman tidying up all the way back to Casillas Ivan Campo, the defender, is uh, waiting on the sideline for Real Madrid. The, uh, not to bring somebody in, perhaps just to strengthen the back. It's Roma. Just over four minutes to go. Balbo whips this one in. That was Cassano. That was going to be a fancy touch, wasn't it? Candela. That was neatly done. Balbo's cross. And a Stuta there going up with uh, Casillas. And, uh, Gabriel Batistuta there just trying to help the young goalkeeper up. Oh, Batistuta knocked him down and then he helps him up. I didn't see him get hit in the face. Casillas covered his face, Mike. I didn't see the, the face, but watch the ball come through here. Look at all the dummies sold on that one. Batistu to Totti and Balbo. Keepers completely beaten, and Balbo just knocks it off the crossbar. Well, I can see this is okay to uh, continue. And Guti is the player that is coming off. And Ivan Campo is the player that comes on. So they're sacrificing an attacking player for one who is a defender. Ivan Campo's first game of the season. Real Madrid then leading 2-1, looking to hold on to that. They went mighty close, though, to being uh, pulled back. There was the shot from Balbo, rocking the crossbar, but staying out. Controversial weekend in England. There's a few talking points in the first half. Both sides felt they should have had a penalty. Both times the referee turned down the appeals. And despite those couple of controversial incidents, it's uh, been pretty incident-free, Tommy. Yeah, he's handled it pretty well, and th there's a lot of pressure out there. There's a lot of niggling stuff going on off the ball, Mike. There's been a lot of bodies flying off the ball. Roberto Carlos. Uh, Manuel was being uh, held back there by uh, Sabina. Sabina gave him a little extra shoulder there. I'm surprised that Paul is not talking to him about that. Yes, he is. I think he's just telling him to call it. originally from Hitchin in Hertfordshire still lives in Hertfordshire now comes uh, lives in Tring oh, you see Zebina getting a grip of McManaman but not letting him go 
Roberto Carlos. There's Figo. Loses out. Cassano. Lima. Still Lima. Trying to cut inside. Dispossessed by Makaleli. Now McManaman. Inside the final minute. Roberto Carlos. McManaman trying to get behind the defence. You're going to have at least three minutes here, Mike Added, I'd imagine. You would think so. Sabino who brought it out of defence. Roma need to get it forward. Balbo. Totti. Dispossessed by Campo. Throw for Real Madrid. Roma's next match will be a trip to Belgium next week, uh, next Wednesday, in fact, to take on Anderlecht. We'll be able to see here on ESPN. Real Madrid will be a home to Lokomotiv Moscow. Anderlecht and Lokomotiv made a 1 1 draw earlier today in Moscow. Now here goes Roberto Carlos. Whips this one across. Great save. Double save. <laughs> Incredible, incredible stuff. How did he keep it out? Well, it looked for all intents and purposes that it was 3 1. Goalkeeper somehow stopped the first one. Great cross this from Roberto Carlos, and here's Raul. Raul coming on the dead run right down through the middle, and it looked like the ball was going to go over the line. Roberto Carlos with a picture perfect cross. Raul, but what a save! Well, a double save. As the uh, fourth official, Andy Durso, has uh, held up the board and saying five minutes of stoppage time to be added. Well, if you're a Roma fan, that's good news, but for Real Madrid, it's not very good news, and I'm a little surprised. I thought maybe four maximum. Now Roma, everybody pushing forward. Candela. Totti. Cassano. Cassano whipping this one in. And who got the final touch? I think he might have come off with Gabriel Badistuda. That's what the officials are saying. Oh, Cassano looks very assured out there as a young player coming on. And uh, he whipped that ball into the middle. Badistuda touched it last. Here's Roberto Carlos's cross, and that's an incredible save. Watch the ball. We never really did get a chance to see how much of it was over the line, but there was some part of the ball over the line. But not all the ball. Goalkeeper kept his wits about him there, young uh, Ivan uh, Calazzoli. And off the head of Ivan Campo that time. Feet high from uh, Fernando Hierro. He's got away with it. Roberto Carlos leaving it for McManaman. McManaman's had a much better second half, Mike, than he did first half. Would have been difficult, would it? <laughs> Just showing up was more was better. And here's Luis Figo. Madrid just need to keep possession. It's gone out of play. Candela takes the throw quickly. It's too quickly. Taken out there on uh, suspicion. Salgado going in from behind. And Cassano. Over two minutes of stoppage time. Five minutes to be added, remember. Totti plays it through. Badistuta. Great save from Casillas. Real Madrid moved up, looking to play the offside trap. Gabriel Badistuta beat it, and he was well picked out. Beautiful, beautiful save here by Casillas coming out. Watch this. Batistuta tries to lift him over him. He doesn't lift it high enough. He catches him on the shoulder, and that's twice that the Real Madrid keeper has used that shoulder to keep the ball out. That was a resulting corner headed away there by Roberto Carlos. Real Madrid just wanted to get it as far forward as possible. Here's Lima now as Roma. Mazzoli 
Long one from the keeper, met there by Fernando Hierro. Look, Manaman now. There's uh, Samuel. Out of what was an awkward situation. Four minutes of stoppage time has been played into the final minute. What should be the final minute. Cassano. Still Cassano. Cut out there by Ivan Campo. He was uh, stopped there by the referee. Candela. And Salgado coming across. Well, there's been much written about the Real Madrid defence, Mike. I think they performed very well today. They've been very, very solid out there. There's been questions asked about Salgado and with uh, Manuel Pablo come in to take his place and things like that. But he hasn't done much wrong today. Number Manaman. And for one final run. Defensive cover that time. Now Roma need to get it forward. Graham Paul looks at the watch and it's all over. And Real Madrid avoid defeat on the opening day of the Champions League for the fifth consecutive season with a 2-1 victory here at Rome's Olympic Stadium. While all the goals came in the uh, second half, Luis Figo five minutes after the restart and then uh, Guti. Totti gave Roma a lifeline from the penalty spot in the 72nd minute. And Roma then piled forward. They went mighty close to getting something out of this game. Casillas coming up with a couple of key saves. That one to deny Gabriel Batistuta. So Real Madrid start their Champions League campaign with a victory. Not the best of starts for Roma. Although these are the two teams who are favoured to progress from Group A. Roma won. Real Madrid 2. That's how it finished here at the Olympic Stadium in Rome. Stay with us, we'll be back to wrap it up after this.